Did you know that if you hit the tilde key on the keyboard, it'll make any panel within Premiere Pro go full screen, which is perfect for something like the program monitor when you want to make it big during playback. And just like that tip, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 simple but sometimes overlooked tips for Premiere Pro. Now, I've been editing videos in Premiere Pro for quite a while, and there's still some times when I stumble across something and I just think to myself, huh. I wish I would have known that a long time ago, but I'm glad I know it now because my life is way better because of it. Like, if you have two monitors, you can use the second display as a full screen output of your program monitor. Let me show you how. Cool. We're gonna go up to Premiere Pro, Preferences, Playback. And here inside video device is your monitors. Right here is my main monitor that I edit on. And if I want this to go over to my laptop, like you saw, all I need to do is check this right here. So here's my laptop without anything on it. And I'm just gonna back up here and I'll hit okay and boom. And you can see here, if I just hit play thing and I just think to myself, huh. I wish I would have known that a long time ago. <laughs> so there you go. Running out of space on your drive? Well, one simple solution is to delete your media cache. Now don't worry, we're not deleting media here. What we're doing is deleting all of the previews that were made by Premiere Pro on previous projects. And if you're not working on those projects anymore, those previews are basically worthless and just taking up space. So let's delete some media cache. With Premiere Pro open, but no projects open, I'm gonna go up to Premiere Pro, Preferences, Media Cache. And in Media Cache, I'm gonna go to Delete. And here I have two options. Now, if you have a project open, this will be grayed out. Delete all Media Cache files from the system. And if you're currently working on a project, you probably wanna go with the top choice anyway, just because you don't wanna delete the previews of the project that you're working with right now. But for me, in this instance, what I'm gonna do is delete all Media Cache files. And let me show you really quick, on my Macintosh HD, I have 452 gigabytes available. Now I'm going to hit OK on cleaning out my media cache. It may take a little bit, but after it's done, this is the difference in how much I've saved. And if you forget to do something like this occasionally, what you can do is just set up automatic delete cache files older than blank days. So if you wanted it to be 10 days, boom. 10 days, or you could just set it up so it only takes up a certain amount of space on your computer. So you could do something like 50 gigabytes. These next three are super simple, but trust me, built up over time, they're going to save you a bunch of time. The first one is just as simple as select clip at playhead. And that's D on the keyboard. So I move my playhead and I hit D and it just selects the clip at the playhead. D, D, <laughs> That's very simple, I understand. But one example of where this could save you time is I'm scrolling through my cut, and instead of going down here to click on the physical clip to then go back up to my effects controls, all I have to do is scroll through my timeline, already have my mouse over here at the effects controls, hit D and boom, now I'm ready to adjust my parameters in the effects controls. That's just one example. There are so many other ways that this could save you time and that's just one of them. The second one is ripple deleting. If I put my playhead right here and I were to ripple delete to the previous edit, what's going to happen is all these clips are going to shift over with my delete. So let me just show you with the keyboard stroke Q. So I'm gonna hit Q and look, everything shifted over. The same thing goes for the other way. So if I wanted to ripple delete to the next edit, I'm just going to hit W on my keyboard and notice how it shifted everything over to the left. Alternatively, you could do something like set an endpoint by hitting I on the keyboard, move your playhead and then hit O on the keyboard. And now if I were to hit ripple delete by holding shift and this delete on the keyboard, it deletes everything in between your markers and shifts all the clips over. Ripple Delete, super useful tool, use it all the time. And the third simple one here on the timeline that has to do with selecting footage is if you have link selection turned on, I click this and it highlights both the audio and video that are paired together. But if I hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, I can then click specific parts of these clips. Same thing goes for if I were to hold Shift and Option at the same time, I can now click and highlight whatever I want to. But the big part that I wanna get across here is I'm gonna hold Option to just select my video. And then I'm still holding Option and I'm going to hit up on my arrow keys, or I could hit down on my arrow keys. And this is a huge time saver for 
nudging your clips up or down. Trust me, once you start using the option up and down keys, you won't go back. It's a better way to move your clips on the timeline so they don't get out of sync. Hey, guess what? I lied. Let me give you about 1.5 more tips to help you move clips around on the timeline. The first one is if you hit Command A on Mac or Control A on Windows, you'll select all of your clips. But what I'm really getting at here is if you were to hold Command on Mac or hold Control on Windows, click all of those clips and I'm going to drag these into another timeline and I'm still holding command on Mac. Now I can insert these clips anywhere on the timeline and shift all of the other clips that were previously there out of the way. So I'm gonna just drop it right here and you can see that it inserted itself and shifted the clips over. If I undo that and now let me put it over here at the beginning like this. And now I've brought in all of these clips to the beginning of the cut. I use that one all the time. Here's three more tips, but they're kind of related to each other. So I'm gonna ask you to consider it to be one tip so we can keep the title of this video, 10 simple but sometimes overlooked tips in Premiere Pro. If you wanna add a simple one solid color to the background of your video, all you have to do is go to your project bin, this little file right here, it's new item and we're gonna do color map. Now this is going to be the width and height of your sequence that you currently have open. So I'm gonna hit okay and now I can make this whatever color I want to. For this example though, I'm going to make it bright green. So I can label this, drag that onto the timeline. And now I have this subscribe animation that I've made and it kind of looks like a green screen, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to nest these two clips to showcase my next tip. And that's how to remove green screen background. So let's say this is all one file. The green screen is a part of the video and I wanna get rid of that. All you have to do is hit shift seven on your keyboard that will bring up your effects window. And then I'm going to type in ultra key. So right here is ultra key. I'll drag this onto my clip. I'll hit shift five to bring up my effects controls. And all I have to do is click the eyedropper and select the green screen. Now I've removed the green from the screen. And just to prove it, let me throw this clip underneath it. And you can see that the green screen has been removed. Now, if you have something more complex than that, all you have to do is go to matte generation, matte cleanup, and start adjusting all of these parameters to remove the green screen to your liking. Now for the last part of this tip, let me delete this clip in the back. And let's say I wanted to export this with the alpha, meaning that what you see here when you play this file will actually just be transparency. It won't be black right here. It'll just be transparent and you can put this clip over whatever you want it to. In order to do that, I'm going to go to File, Export, Media. I'm gonna choose Format, QuickTime, and in the video codec, I'm gonna to go to Animation, scroll down, and do 8BPC plus Alpha. Now it's going to export with the Alpha or the transparent layer of my video file. I'll hit Export. And just to show you that this is working, here is the file right here. I'll bring it into my project and drag it onto the timeline. And there you have it. I've exported that video on a transparent background. The last tip is for audio and applying effects. Instead of going to each separate clip on the timeline and manually dragging in an effect, like let's just type in the multiband compressor. If I click and drag this onto my VO right here, I would need to click and drag that onto all of my files which if I ever needed to adjust any of the parameters of the multiband compressor, that means I would have to go through and do it to every single one. What is much faster in situations like this is to use the audio track mixer. So if you were to go up to window, audio track mixer, and I'm going to do it for this timeline that we're looking at right here, you can see on my VO track, I have a whole channel full of effects and those effects are affecting all of the clips on this track. I don't have to go into my effects controls for every single clip and adjust parameters. It's just globally on that track within the track mixer. And it's really easy to add effects to your track mixer. So in this example, let's say I wanted to add an effect to track one, which is my VO track. So all you need to do is go to this little down arrow. And let's say I wanted to add a multiband compressor. If you want to adjust the parameters of the effect, all you need to do is double click on it and it will bring up the same window as if you were in the effects controls panel. Now I'll go to something like broadcast and exit out. And just so you can really hear the difference between the two channels, I'll add a high pass filter on here. So it makes it sound like I'm coming out of a radio or something like that. So here's track two and my file's on track two. When I play this back, you won't hear any effect because there's no effects on the channel. This is a test. Now, if I move this up one track by hitting option up, that was a callback. Now that I have these effects on there, you should hear a difference. This is a test. 
back down. This is a test. This is a test. It's a huge time saver and super useful for things like mixing audio. Hopefully there was something in this video to help you in your video editing endeavors. If there was, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below on what I should tutorialize next. I got some videos over here if you wanna hang out some more. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.